partners today, Cosbox. Um, Rob Wu is going to take it over. Have a great webinar, everybody. All right. Thank you, Aretha. Well, but before you sign off or before you kind of close your camera, I want to just have everybody give uh, a silent round of applause to Aretha. Thanks so much for hosting us. And I know you've been through uh, a lot in the past few weeks. So I appreciate all your help that you do, as well as the work that you do at TechSoup. Uh, I know this probably doesn't go said enough, but you know a lot of nonprofits benefit from education So uh, that you do. So I appreciate your hard work on that. All right. So uh, webinar time. So thank you all for joining us. My name is Rob Wu. I am the founder and CEO of Cosbox. We're here today to talk about peer-to-peer -peer financing for small nonprofits. For 15 years, I built Cosbox from ground up. Uh, I, remember, I remember quitting my job, saving up 10,000 bucks 15 years ago, and then uh, moving in with my buddy, my co-founder, Jeff, and then we decided just to start building product in New York City. Uh, lived at the poverty line for several years, but what ended up happening was that, long story short, today we've helped nonprofits raise over half a billion dollars online. Most of these organizations that we work with, a thousand small nonprofits every year, uh, do it online. So we're excited just to share with you some of our learnings in, a, in the past over, I guess, a decade and a half, as well as sharing with you some best practices in terms of what works and what doesn't work, as well as what works with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You're also on with Jenna Notar Francesco. Jenna's been with Cosfox for a few years, helped out thousands of nonprofits with setting up their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns, guiding them with best practices, as well as taking an active role in our education team and crafting a lot of content and education resources that we create here. So excited to share with you uh, on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. During this webinar, if you do have any questions at any time, feel free to use the Zoom the Q and A function. You can find it on the bottom of your control panel in Zoom. Uh, it's noted Q and A with a little chat icon, uh, and also there's a ch chat function here. A lot of folks uh, have mentioned where they're coming from, uh, where dialing in today. So feel free to chat in your questions as well. And we'd love to carve out a lot of time today just to go over some of the questions, especially some of the specific questions that you have. So any questions come to mind, feel free to uh, put it in into the Q&A as well as the chat. All right. And again, uh, this session is being recorded, as Aretha mentioned, plus the slides will be sent out. So if you do have to hop off early for another meeting or for lunch or whatever else it is, uh, feel free uh, to, to do so and you'll get a recording of the webinar. All right. So what is Cosvox and why are we here to talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? For the past few years, uh, we've been partners with TechSoup on the software catalog side. So uh, if you want to navigate to TechSoup.org, you can find a search Cosvox. You can find uh, our listings page over there for a discounted rate on our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform. At Cosvox, we are a pro software product. Uh, we make peer-to-peer -peer fundraising super easy. We offer three things. One is best in class online fundraising. So you can run donation pages, peer to peer fundraising campaigns, campaign sites, event ticketing, all from one roof. So you're not using multiple tools for multiple purposes. The second thing we offer is hands on support. Uh, I've worked with a lot of small nonprofits, and the smallest nonprofits need a lot of help when it comes to getting set up with best practices with process. So we offer that over here at Cosbox as part of our social mission. Then very lastly, we offer top-rated education. So whether it be peer-to-peer -peer fundraising guides, toolkits, resources, ideas, best practices, we have tons of resources on our website at cosbox.com slash blog. You can raise more in less time with Cosbox. As I mentioned, you can use us for donation pages, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, crowdfunding, all that good stuff on our platform. So check us out when you do have a chance on the TechSoup offer page. Um, you can also use Cosbox to monitorize your donations. You know, a lot of organizations that we work with uh, are still thinking about real transaction-based fundraising, meaning that they just have a form and then they hope donors will donate. Well, at Cosbox, we think about the donor experience, making it really easy for donors to make a donation, whether it's through mobile wallets like PayPal and Venmo, or if it's through a short donation process. And very lastly, we offer hands-on peer-to-peer fundraising. So you can mobilize your network to raise funds on Cosbox. What we've seen is organizations that use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on our platform tend to raise twice as much as organizations just using donation forms, because it's a great way for you to reach new networks as well as acquire new donors. If you're looking for more info about Cosbox, feel free to go to cosbox.com slash schedule dash a dot demo if you want a little bit more. Um, so feel free to check us out if you want to do a self-service video kind of walkthrough. 
And lastly here um, that we offer to you is free fundraising tips. So uh, a lot of great resources. Feel free to sign up, sign up for our blog subscription. You get a newsletter once a week about uh, five different free fundraising resources, whether it's webinars, recordings, uh, guides, calendars, fundraising calendars, the works. Feel free to check us out uh, on coswalks.com slash blog. All right. Uh, and you see that right there. For our session today, um, we will go broad as well as we'll go deep. And then we'll have a, a section at the end of our uh, webinar to go with Q&A. So we'll talk about the importance of peer to peer fundraising, why you should even do it. Uh, just the fact that you're showing up today on this webinar mentions that you have some interest in peer to peer fundraising. So we'd love to just reiterate that, give you some ammunition so you can get your colleagues and your board members on board. We'll talk about uh, the process of creating a peer to peer campaign. So starting at the goals and metrics, how you can set a fundraising goal, how you can recruit and engage your peer to peer fundraisers. And also we'll talk about how you can create an effective peer to peer campaign whether it's on Coswox or some other platform. And then we also have this section, which I'm really excited about, which is how you can leverage AI for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. A lot of folks that do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising really get stuck on this content generation phase. So with AI you can, and ChatGPT, you can actually automatically get to a great first draft, whether it be your social media posts, uh, the fundraising appeals, or even like your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising idea. So I'll go through a few examples on how you can do that. And lastly, uh, we'll talk about measuring success, and then we'll jump into our optional Q&A section. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Jenna, and she's gonna go over uh, the importance of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and I'll be back in just a hot second. Thanks so much. Awesome, thanks, Rob. Um, my name is Jenna again. I have worked with several nonprofits, and I'm so excited to share with you um, some of the tips that I've gleaned. Um, so first, we'll start with the importance of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Bit of a, a little bit of a crash course in case you're new to peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, but the question is, why is peer-to-peer -peer important? Basically, these four points. It's easy, super easy, which is we'll talk about why. Super effective. It boosts your ROI. Your, re your return on investment, and it increases retention. So let's break down why. Um, so first of all, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, is this grassroots model of fundraising that relies on your peers. So you're reaching out to each other on behalf of a cause. Um, basically, you can activate your key supporters to fundraise on your behalf, and then they can reach out to their social networks through personal and or team fundraising pages. Um, here's like a little model of what uh, a campaign can look like, the structure of it. So at the bottom, you have your donors um, and your donors are connected to the first level of fundraisers, uh, your, your individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. The fundraisers can then be connected organically within team pages. If there are groups of people or organizations that wanna raise funds together, and then it's all housed under one campaign, really nice, easy place for people to go and process their donations and also open up a page to fundraise on your behalf. I have this little model here. It says this part is optional, team pages are optional. Um, you know, again, if you want, if you have groups of people who want to raise funds together and show their support on, on behalf of a team page, you can use them. If not, just use your individual pages. It's very effective as well. So we have some common types of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns. Um, we have event-based fundraising, which is great for virtual galas, events, race walks, runs. Um, we have polar plunges, bolathons, et cetera. You can do giving days and projects, which would be things like annual fundraising, crowdfunding, Giving Tuesday, or other giving day campaigns, um, capital projects, program campaigns, et cetera. And then you have the DIY or the third party do it yourself kind of campaigns. Um, these would be any third party events, partner fundraising, memorials and tributes, challenges, weddings, and birthday campaigns. So, you know, if you can fundraise for it in person, you can fundraise for it online. You can always spin up a peer to peer campaign and raise funds online. This is just a quick example of one of our Giving Tuesday campaigns. Um, on Causebox, 
uh, with um, the Council for Exceptional Children. And I'm actually going to show this in more detail later when we go through our campaign examples, but this is just a quick look at what it can, the, the landing page can look like for you. Very customizable. And here's just a visual representation of something like an award or gala example, which we'll look at. Um, and so, yeah, it's very customizable and it's an easy way to show your donors how, how the, you know, the impact of their gift as well as the progress of your campaign and an easy way for, um, for your supporters to get on board. So some advantages for small nonprofits, um, just so we're all on the same page, um, we are defining small nonprofits as around, you know, $500,000 in assets or less. Um, and so, but you know, if peer to peer can work for any size organization. Um, but the reason why we're calling it small but mighty is because small nonprofits have some unique advantages, um, namely the nonprofit's ability to personalize interactions with their donors. It's one of their greatest assets. Um, so they're, you know, the local organizations are very adept at solving community problems because they have the opportunity to get to know people on a one on one basis. The other thing is that small nonprofits don't have to kind of, you know, get through a lot of bureaucratic red tape. There's less of that, which means it's easier for organizations to be quick to make decisions and, you know, have be able to run it on without having to talk to different levels of management. And uh, to that end, uh, they're easier to, it's much easier to be more nimble and quickly pivot fundraising strategies when needed which makes small nonprofits a great candidate for the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising model. And as Rob mentioned, um, organizations that use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising have been seen to raise twice the amount of funds or more. Um, really, there's no limit to the, you know, the magnitude of the, um, the extent of your fundraising. Um, Amy Kazmarak, the director of the development at um, SOS Children, Children's Villages said, I think it was so easy for everybody to use peer to peer fundraising on Causebox. It just flowed. I had all generations and levels of users. It was just that easy to use. Now, SOS Children's Villages, I love their um, Christmas and holiday campaigns that they run on Causebox every year. They do drives um, for, um, for, for gifts for their kids, and they did such a great job. Um, I do have this one other example of JASA, which was able to raise twice the amount of their funding goal. You can see that they had an original goal of $10,000, and they were able to raise almost $30,000 on CauseFox for their Back to Class Senior Year campaign. Um, so these are just a few examples of successful fundraising with peer-to-peer. -peer. In terms of setting your fundraising goals and metrics, we're gonna talk about this a little bit. Um, we have this SMART uh, acronym that we use, SMART Fundraising Goals. Um, they stand for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. So if we just go through these just briefly here, we'll start with what it means to set SMART fundraising goals. So the first one to be specific. When you're setting your goal, you want to first determine, you know, what you see as the ultimate result. Being as specific as possible will help you be clear about your financial goal and what meeting that goal will do for your organization. So I listed some example um, specific goals here, you know, uh, some questions that you'll need to ask yourself. What do you ultimately want to accomplish? What needs to happen in order to reach the goal? Um, and who will benefit from the goal once it's met. And then some example goals would be, oh, you know, uh, and we need to raise $1,000 to house 100 of the city's homeless for one night, right? You have how much um, in order to produce, you know, what outcome and maybe even in a time and space. Um, so in fundraising, being as specific as possible in your goal setting will be a twofold process. And you'll need to determine first how much you wanna raise and then how many donors, et cetera, during the campaign will be needed um, to further clarify your goal. In terms of measurability, um, measurable, uh, you will first uh, need to be able to measure your success. So um, in terms of you know, monetary donations, that's pretty easy. You can see the numbers increase and you're able to determine uh, your measure of success that way. 
Um, also, number of donors could be a way that you're measuring uh, your goals, the number of donors that you're acquiring, um, number of donors that you're reaching, uh, and then also the percentages of returning donors. And so deter to determine whether your goal is measured, uh, can be measured, you can outline how much you need to raise, who will be tracking the progress toward your goal, how you'll know when your goal is reached. Um, so you'll want to track both fundraiser and donor um, goals. Um, so be give a to give a clear picture um, where you are in the process. So not only is measuring your goal a great motivator for everyone, um, but it can also boost your team morale as you continue to meet um, milestone uh, monetary goals. Uh, number three is attainable. And for attainable, you'll want to be in setting your realistic and attainable goals. Um, it's one of the most difficult aspects of fundraising. Um, but if you're a part of a nonprofit or other service organization, chances are that uh, you might have be work, you might be working with limited budgets that might impact the scope. But um, yeah, you just want to determine if it what what number is feasible for you. Um, if you're a, a nonprofit with a small operating budget, then it's best to start with a goal that maybe stretches you but isn't too outrageous. Um, so here are some things that you can ask yourself when trying to be attainable with your goal. Um, think about past experiences, past fundraising events, how much you've been able to raise online. Um, and then also what's your average size donation, right? That'll help you determine what, uh, you know, based on the number of donors, based on the average donation size, it can give you a good idea about what your overall um, fundraising goal can be. Um, how many people have donated to your campaign and also what resources um, does your organization have to commit to the fundraising process? So that would be in terms of hours and money that they can um, commit to the fundraising process. So you want to stay away from maybe lofty or unattainable goals, um, but you know try to stretch yourself a little. Um, in terms of relevant goals, uh, relevancy is very necessary for fundraising, right? You've established how much you need to raise and how you'll measure it, but now you need to de determine if the goal actually works for your organization. So um, your, your fundraising goal should really directly relate to your mission. And some questions that you can ask yourself is, what will meeting this goal do to further our mission, right? Um, what are the direct results in terms of lives changed, return on investment, et cetera? Uh, are you reaching a target group with this goal? And how do the services uh, and the donations will provide connections with the services you're currently offering? Um, so, for example, if you want to raise $10,000, then decide exactly who will be benefiting from that $10,000. And uh, so, yep, yeah, that's for relevant. Um, and then objective, uh, the, the fifth objective is to be time-based. Um, so that's the last factor in considering your goal. Um, that would be the timeline. So your goal has to have a start and end date. Well, that's what we would recommend. Not only are the dates important for your organization's budget, but they're also necessary to motivate people, your team members, your donors, your fundraisers, motivating them into action. Um, giving them a timeline is great to do that. And so shorter campaigns around the 30 day mark, um, it's actually, you know, can be easier on the fundraiser um, because of the short timeline gives a sense of urgency for both the fundraiser and the donor. But, you know, it can be a, a longer campaign, more than 30 days, as long as you can explicitly state a start and end date, that would be great um, to get everybody on the same page. Uh, and then steps can be taken at the present time uh, to, in order to know what to do next. Um, and then if you can create an outline of where you should be, uh, at imp important points, like milestone points of your campaign, that would be great to detail those out as well. Um, but yeah, having a timeline just helps keep everyone on track for success. Uh, so if you're close to the end of the campaign and you realize donations aren't coming in, then you can make a decision to step up the rest of your fundraising game at that point. Uh, I just put this graphic here to show one example of a campaign that lit literally detailed out their goals, right? We have on the on the bottom here their overall goal of sixty thousand dollars, right? That's their um, overarching larger campaign goal um, for their programs, and then they uh, they actually 
made it, you know, detailed it out a little further um, that a person can donate $25 to support a child's learning for a month. And if they wanted to support a full year of a child's education, they could um, donate $300. So giving, giving donors, um, you know, very defined uh, impact for their donation is very helpful. And I'm going to pass it over to Rob to finish up our metrics section. Awesome. Yeah. So those are some methodologies in terms of um, how you can set fundraising goals for your peer-to-peer -peer campaign and the method and the process to do that. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we realized that it's actually very difficult to go through the whole process of the SMART goals of setting your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign if you don't have other benchmarks and other organizations to look at, especially if you haven't done this before for the first time. So uh, one of the things I want to share today is are some hard numbers, some averages, some metrics from our fundraising platform uh, so you can better be informed of, of what's realistic, what is the average, so you can actually set some goals based on benchmarks. So when we ran a study uh, last year of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns on our platform, we looked at about 1,000 peer-to-peer campaigns um, and ended up being about 47,000 personal pages that raised over $20. So we really wanted to look at the campaigns that were active, the ones that uh, someone got set up, but also someone actually got a, a donation onto their page. This ended up being, this segment of folks ended up being around 29 million uh, in terms of peer-to-peer -peer donation volume. So we looked at this from a very high level, and this gave us the opportunity to actually look at some hard metrics when it came to the average campaign race. So on the next slide, uh, what you see is that when you look at this data, um, the average campaign uh, for for the segment of organizations is actually around twenty seven thousand dollars. So when you're thinking about setting a fundraising goal, uh, it does it fit that that bucket? If you're a small organization, then your fundraising goal is probably a little less than twenty seven thousand dollars. If you're slightly larger in terms of a small organization, then it's probably over that amount. But you have to set a realistic goal, especially if you're running a peer to peer campaign. An average benchmark is around twenty seven k per peer to peer. This ends up being about $74 as an average donation. So you can expect your average donations to come in through peer-to-peer -to, -peer to be around that level. Uh, sometimes this is a little lower than your average, sometimes a little higher uh, when it comes to your donation form. But by and large, this is about right. And then we look at the average donation to a general donation page, uh, general page on that peer-to-peer. -peer. So these are donations that are, are not attributed to a personal page. Uh, these are donations just directly to the organization as part of a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Uh, this amount is a little higher uh, just because uh, or people who donate just generally to your organization probably already know about the organization they're returning donors. So you typically see a higher gift amount. So uh, we also saw that um, when it came to a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, 80% of the funds were raised offline. Sorry, 80% of the funds were raised online, and then 20% was raised offline. This means that even though you're thinking about digital fundraising and peer-to-peer -peer when it comes to online, there's a large portion of donations that actually come offline, either your checks, checks ACH, uh, cash, just kind of whatever it is. So you want to take into account that 20% uh, to give people direction and opportunity so they can send in their, their donation as well as make a donation online. All right, so what's really interesting about this too is that when we look at the data, 30% um, of the funds raised were on the general page. So yeah, while well, the, the rest of it, the large bulk of, bulk of it, 87% were raised through peer-to-peer. -peer. Of course, when you're running a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, when you're focusing on that, when you're focusing on recruiting folks to fundraise for you, you're gonna get the bulk of your donations through your supporters who have personal pages. 13% uh, of it uh, came in through just general, which also means that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a great opportunity to engage your existing supporters, your existing donors. It's an opportunity for them to get tied into some of the stories that other people are sharing so they could make a gift to your organization. So don't, dis don't discount that 13%, which drives a large amount of donations when it comes to your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, and also what's interesting too, is that when you look at the activation um, of peer-to-peer of -peer fundraising, only 34% of peer-to-peer -peer pages created actually raise funds. So you wanna look at it as a funnel. Uh, just like if you look at your website, you're probably getting a ton of website visitors. And then some of them are converting and subscribing to your newsletter. And some of them are uh, making a donation onto your page. So even though uh, there are a lot of people creating personal pages, not all of them get through the process of getting set up 
or getting their first donation for whatever the reason. So thinking about this, cultivation, nurturing, and coaching is very important. So you can increase activation rates. Uh, but also, when you're thinking about the number of people that you need to recruit, uh, you want to re basically recruit three times as many uh, folks uh, because you're going to see some attrition when it comes to your supporters creating pages. The average funds raised per peer-to-peer -peer page is around $795, uh, just as a base on the average. So if you're thinking that you're going to raise $10,000 per donation page on average, then that's probably uh, a little too high. Uh, well, if you're thinking you only raise $50 per donation page, then that's probably a little too low. So our averages that we see for a small campaign is around $800 over here. And that ends up being around uh, 11 donations per personal financing page. So... Uh, these are a lot of metrics. So what you can do is you can take all these inputs, uh, all these averages, and then you can formulate in terms of how many supporters do you think you have, you think you have, or how many people you think you can recruit. And then you can go from bottom up in terms of coming up with your fundraising goal. Or what you can do is you can go top down, meaning that let's say you want to raise $50,000, then you can use this data to determine how many people you need to recruit, how many donations you need to get. And then from there, you can be better informed in terms of your communications plan, as well as your milestone goals of your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. You could do all of that. Uh, what, are, what you can do is you could just use our free Cosmox peer-to-peer -peer calculator. What we've done over here is we've taken all the inputs, all these baseline metrics over here. And of course, you can tweak them and you can uh, change it a little bit. And then uh, all you need to do is just input your fundraising goal. And then what it spits out is the number of people you need to recruit, uh, the number of donations you need to get. And then you can use those metrics as a baseline, as milestones as you're running your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So it's a great forecasting tool. Okay, now we're on to um, more of, again, the methodology for recruiting and engaging your fundraisers. So who are the best candidates for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Um, again, um, we would say your most loyal supporters, uh, so board members, staff, volunteers, partners. Um, a big one is our ret returning donors or high-level donors. Um, also could be program alumni, uh, past event attendees. Again, really the people who, uh, who have clearly and uh, passionately supported your mission and are behind your mission and, and really want to um, go out there and are motivated to ask for donations. Um, so some quick tips on recruitment. Um, consider doing a soft launch. Uh, so this is a couple of weeks before your campaign, uh, before you want to really like publicly launch your campaign, you'll want to um, first uh, start by asking a few people to uh, open their page and start fundraising to get the ball rolling, um, to give you some money in the bank uh, before you launch it publicly, um, build some momentum for your campaign. And usually within the first two weeks um, is when you'll recruit most of your fundraisers, right? Um, and so then, then you can, you know, launch it after you have some people on board, you can launch it publicly and then get some, uh, continue to get uh, fundraisers recruited as, as the weeks go on. Um, you'll want to use multiple channels to recruit your fundraisers. So if you can think about the ways that you like to be engaged um, as, you know, as a partner, participant, supporter of other organizations, um, you can, you know, recognize that fundraisers might have different ways they like to be communicated with. Um, so not everyone's going to be great with phone calls, but maybe they like emails and, you know, vice versa. So try to use some different channels to reach out to your fundraisers. Again, if you're making a personal ask, um, then make that personal ask to that person in the way that they, they like to be communicated with. Uh, and then consider doing a, a webinar, maybe webinar training to help your fundraisers get set up for success. You know, you don't have to do it this way, but as long as you have some sort of equipping language to help your fundraisers with the whole process of, you know, doing the fundraising, that's really important. Um, again, I think, yeah, Rob mentioned the idea of nurturing your fundraisers um, because, you know, if they have a really great experience the first time, they're going to want to come back year after year to support um, so Kelly McLaughlin, who is uh, the FIT strategic consultant uh, at her FIT, FIT, strategic, FIT strategic consulting, um, she's the founder of FIT. Um, she says, I think our main takeaway is that 
When, when it comes to online fundraising, you have two options to expand. You can either recruit more fundraisers or you can empower the fundraisers you have to raise more money. It's sort of that 80-20 percentage I think people refer to. It's like, oh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest 80% um, of my re in, uh, resources and my time and energy on the people who um, generate 80% of um, my, the work, right? So these are your existing fundraisers. And um, the way that we have seen it very successful is to actually craft this, uh, what we call a fundraising toolkit. It's essentially a document, it could be a Google Doc, it can be an online PDF, um, it could be a video format, really anything that kind of guides your fundraiser along the process from start, starting their, you know, opening their page to the end. And it includes um, equipping language, it includes expectations of their fundraising. Um, so maybe, you know, what their goals are, maybe if they have, um, you know, if you have specific monetary goals for your fundraisers, um, it can be the whole process of sign up, um, registration, et cetera, maybe uh, some information of what they need. Um, but basically uh, the really important part of it too is their, the, the communication element. Um, so providing them with some email templates, some social media posts, um, and giving them literally the language, the, the text <laughs> to just copy it and paste it into their email uh, client or, um, you know, they can share it through Causebox easily as well, their email um, or, you know, posting it on social media. But you want to make it as sim simple as possible because, you know, fundraisers are not trained in fundraising um, and it might be intimidating at first. But if you can provide them the, the um, content, it makes it a whole lot simpler. And uh, I think Rob's going to go into like how to craft that content easily. But just to get started, I would recommend checking out our um, sample toolkits. It gives, uh, this this blog post gives sort of like a detailed outline on how you, you know, the, the information that you can put into a toolkit. And also if you just add your name and email, uh, you'll be able to download 10 free samples uh, to get you, to give you some inspiration on that. But definitely, definitely recommended. And I can drop that in the chat later too. Uh, but yeah, you'll want to check that out. Tips for le leveraging social media. Um, so uh, as an org and you're, you know, between your admin, you'll want to create a schedule and have regular rhythms of communication with your fundraisers um, and also your donors. Uh, so you'll want to define, you know, how you communicate with both fundraisers and donors. You'll want to stay relevant and give your audience something that they value in return. It's not just asking for something, but it's also you know, providing them with maybe resources, um, some thought-provoking content, something that really grabs their attention as they, you know, are on social media, makes them stop scrolling. Um, to drive more engagement, you can always ask your community to share their stories uh, because, uh, you know, social media is our platform to share about, you know, personal things. And um, it's always nice to invite people to share their stories, especially how their story relates to your organization or you know, vice versa, how your organization relates to the impact in their lives. Um, so if you can you know, provide this personal touch online, that's really helpful. Um, capturing your community's attention with trust and eventually you can convert them to taking the action, right? So all the steps one through four, right? Are kind of your ways to um, engage them online in order to build that trust. And then you can eventually make that ask. So these are just a couple social media examples. We have some nice graphics here with some uh, nonprofits online, right? Give Child Marriage the Finger. That's one of those uh, really compelling graphics, sort of, um, you know, you know, shocking uh, kind of like eye-catching graphic here and uh, text. Um, then we have the idea of um, with uh, the woman's story in the center right, um, talking about how hope lives in this organization. And then the third graphic is a personal uh, story, um, why this woman is fundraising um, for uh, her dad and her dad's story. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about social media. Um, in terms of crafting effective campaigns, we're gonna dive into this really briefly. Um, I'm speaking how to, to spin them up on Causebox. It's like super simple, uh, no IT needed for the branding of your online campaign. Uh, you, it's just a couple steps and you can have a full branded fundraising site and start taking donations. So the first step is to open your, you know, open your account, open a branded campaign. 
um, definitely encourage you to add your you know, custom graphics, videos, sponsor logos, any information about matching gifts that you have. Um, and, then, and then get into, start uh, entering the fundraising goal, right? Determine you know, the settings that you want to display, the metrics that you want to display on the landing page. That could include impact metrics. When you um, can quantify goods and services raised, you can show the donors how much of you know, X goal, uh, good or service you've raised with the funds. Um, put that end date in to increase the sense of urgency. Step three would be to uh, get to personalizing that personal and team page default information. That would be their appeal text and also the welcome email. Um, step four, you're going to add your social sharing. It's just a quick image, title, and description. This will be uh, like the visual that uh, is connected to your campaign URL when you share it to social media. And then step five, you're going to uh, you're going to customize the donation form to uh, reflect all of those smart goals uh, that you had. Uh, I guess the smart goals would be reflected in your metrics as well. But your metrics uh, and also your donation form, uh, donation tiers is really helpful um, to give people a place to um, start with determining how much they want to donate. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then reshare for our um, example campaigns I have this year. Okay. So we're looking at JASA again. Um, a really great uh, day. Uh, I think it was like a giving day. Maybe it was a full day, full length campaign, 30 days um, for uh, their back to class senior year. I just love how they've customized this page. Um, and they were really great in um, inputting their 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 specific metrics um, for you know how much their uh, basically the impact with the funds that they've raised. So they sponsor fifteen thousand classes and activities annually. Um, they they service fourteen thousand seven hundred seniors attending those classes, and um, they have thirty one JASA locations. And then they also broke out the activities on the right column, you can see how very customizable with branding this is with your own text, text colors. Um, and then they left a personal video, personal touch with uh, the seniors who are benefiting from their services. So I think they did a great job just really defining things out using the peer-to-peer -peer model to drive donations with team pages, as well as the personal fundraising pages. Um, but they did a really great job here. Um, and then the other one is just a quick Giving Tuesday campaign. Uh, so they also exceeded their goal. And um, yeah, they also were really great in defining, you know, um, the impact of the donation. They defined the organization's five endowments, um, provided uh, a custom story here, a personal story and some personal graphics. And they had a pretty robust set of fundraisers and team pages. And so they were able to quickly raise their goal as well. So we're going to go back to our slides. Those were just a couple of examples, but there are so many. Um, and um, yeah, highly encourage you to uh, just uh, check out Causevox and to see you know, all the different opportunities for peer to peer. I'm going to pass this back to Rob. All right. So you just saw like plenty of amazing examples of peer-to-peer -peer campaigns um, and of varying degrees of amount raised and of varying degrees of uh, preparation as well. So one of the challenges that we see a lot over here at Cosvox is that uh, even though at Cosvox we make it really easy for folks to create a peer-to-peer -peer campaign with our tools, one of the difficult pieces is about how you can actually create all the content like your fundraising appeal, your social media appeals, your, your fundraising toolkits even. It takes a lot of time, especially for fundraisers who are wearing a lot of different hats, to go in and spend the time to become copywriters or to become coaches. So one of the tools that I've been really excited about this year is actually using AI to power that. Um, so specifically, uh, we use ChatGPT. Uh, we've been experimenting with this a lot uh, alongside with uh, our, our nonprofits in terms of how they can do it. So ChatGPT is a AI tool. You can go to um, open.chat, uh, 
something something that AI and we'll paste in the link over there so you can follow along and we have a link in another slide basically it allows you to create content and great first drafts within minutes uh, this tool has reached 100 million users within two months so it's it, it reached that point faster than TikTok than Instagram than a lot of other tools so it's amazing to see how fast it's grown because it's actually very useful. I liken it to be like a calculator for words. If you have trouble drafting blog posts, drafting emails, drafting content, social media plans, all that stuff, this uh, tool will help you speed along very quickly. So to access ChatGPT, you can go to chat.openai.com slash chat. It's a free tool. Uh, we don't get anything for promoting this. We just think it's very useful for folks. Uh, just alongside a lot of our other tools, like our peer-to-peer -peer calculator, our financing plans, our financing toolkits, this is just another great tool that you can use at your disposal to help save you a bunch of time so you can launch your financing uh, sooner rather than later. So you can follow along over here. What I want to do is kind of go through a few examples of a few specific use cases of how you can actually use this to create and generate the content for your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So uh, why don't we get started over here? I'm going to go over fundraising appeals, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm going to share my screen after Jenna kind of closes hers. So I'm going to open up my ChatGPT kind of browser window over here, um, and we'll get started over here. So. Uh, once I open it up, you know, let's say one of the first things I want to do is I'm creating my peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Uh, I want to figure out what kind of text to actually put in there to make it more compelling. This becomes your case for support or your financing appeal. So I can just type it in in natural language uh, where I'm just saying, hey, I'm launching a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, trying to raise 27000 in 30 days. Both metrics are best practices and benchmarks. I work at a small nonprofit that helps kids exposed to STEM education programs. And we're hoping our community will sign up for a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page and ask their friends and family to make a donation. So very something casual, very uh, um, uh, just conversational. And the output that I want, and this is very important, you need to specify the specific output that you want to get, is I want to uh, this AI tool to write a 200-word fundraising appeal so it fits on the front page of my campaign site. And I want the tone to be friendly and lighthearted. So I could just do this, put in the prompt, and then it'll spit out um, uh, some a great first draft for me to put in my campaign. So uh, here's what it came back with. It says, are you ready to make a difference? Okay, we sure hope so. So it's very light and casual. Uh, and then they're talking about how they're a nonprofit. They can't do it alone. That's why they're launching a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. And then uh, this is how folks can get started. So that's something that uh, you can use. Uh, I, I took a very casual tone over here. So what I can do next is I can ask it to rewrite it to be more professional. So let's say my audience is, uh, is, isn't kind of like the casual like engineer. Uh, let's say they're a little more professional. So what I can do is I can write, have it rewrite this. And then within a minute, it'll rewrite the whole thing based on a specific tone. So it's more professional, a little more buttoned up. So that's something that you can play with uh, with these prompts to generate uh, the specific text that you're looking for. Here's Orange Wood Foundation, just as a different example. You know, they have a great fundraising campaign. It's almost raised $600,000. Uh, and one of the things I wanna do here is I'm actually gonna take their fundraising appeal here and I'm going to have ChatGPT uh, kind of tweak it. So I'll say below is a peer to peer fundraising campaign, fundraising appeal on the campaign website. Rewrite to make it 100 words and rewrite to make it more lighthearted. So this is something you can do on a fly to make it really easy. So, you know, usually for me, uh, it would take several hours just to kind of rewrite something, crafting the words, making sure it's right. I'm not really great at the kind of the writing piece of it, uh, but this is a great tool that uh, we found to allow you to iterate on different concepts. So this is a prompt that we put in as well as the example. Is very factual based in terms of what their event is about. Um, and then we want to make it a little shorter as well as we want to make it a little more casual too. So um, this is one way that you can do it. Um, so you can follow along. You can put in your own examples over there. Um, so we went over some of that. You know, let's say um, I, I have my great fundraising appeal. I took this first draft. I tweaked it. I got, I got it approved by, um, by, by it. 
by my boss and my team, and then we put it into the campaign site. The next step is actually figuring out uh, potentially what kind of donation tiers and amounts you want people to donate. So what I can prompt it to do is to create five donation amounts in a donation tier descriptions based off this fundraising appeal. So let's say, let's see what it comes back with. All right, great. So here's some interesting things where it came back with um, five different uh, donation tier amounts. So $75 is the average amount, which is great. Uh, so it follows the best practice being in the middle. And then we have two tiers below that, 25 and 50, and then two tiers above that, um, which, uh, which are a lot higher, so 100 and 250. So this actually follows a lot of the fundraising best practices, and it's built in into the AI tool because it's just smart enough to know uh, what what um, what to generate. And one of the things I really love about this is it actually gives you a specific uh, level for that giving and then a description that's tied to the impact of the STEM education program. So then what you can do next is you can tweak this a little bit, you can reprompt it, um, or you can discuss it with your team, and then you can input this into your donation page on your peer-to-peer -peer campaign site so that your donors see different levels of giving that they can donate to. So it saves you a bunch of time. Um, this is a lot better than just presenting just dollar figures, because what you want to do is make sure that you can tie the impact of a donation, the potential impact of a donor, what they can do, to a specific um, dollar amount that they can donate. All right, uh, other things you can do over here um, is you can actually use this um, to write donation receipts. So when you're filling out your peer-to-peer -peer campaign, uh, one of the things that uh, is hard to do and is hard to, is hard to make personal is the receipt that a donor gets once they make a donation. So um, I'm gonna ask it to write a donation receipt email to donors if there's a campaign that's signed by the ED. So again, keeping the tone fun and inviting. So what it does next is it actually gives me a pretty decent uh, thank you letter that I can just copy and paste into my Cosbox account or my peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool, um, and then uh, allows me to have more of a personal touch, of a personal thank you to my donors automatically. Um, so I love this piece of it. You can rewrite this with different tones um, as well to make it um, a little bit more engaging or a little bit more fitting to your organization. I know that I'm a little bit over time here, so I'm gonna actually kick it back to Jenna because I think uh, we got a good feel over here. Uh, in our slides that we send out, we have additional examples and different prompts you can use. And also on Cosbox too, we have tons of uh, AI uh, education resources from how you can write email campaigns and fundraising appeals. And we actually just did a chat GPT for nonprofit fundraising webinar that you can take a look at for free on our website as well. So feel free to check it out. Awesome. I will share the rest of our slides. Um, there you go. Awesome. Thanks. So we're just wrapping up here. Um, the last step would be to measure your success. Um, so we just have a couple uh, a couple pieces of information for you with that. Uh, we've got the ideas of evaluate, identify, plan, implement, and measure. Okay. So. First, you're going to do your evaluation. You're going to analyze all the data. Do your smart goal evaluation, right? Determine um, determine your donation goal, um, your number of donors goal. Uh, determine, you know, make the make make the analysis, and then as your campaign is running, um, you can determine if the donations are lower than expected, um, and uh, so then you can pivot. Uh, pivot accordingly um, in the implement stage. So you're going to evaluate the data during, uh, as you run your campaign, you can identify uh, where you could adjust your strategy, as I mentioned. So maybe in this example, okay, donations are lower than expected, social media engagement is li limited. Well, maybe then you decide that you need to target a specific audience or quantify the goods and services or add a compelling story, right? So then you can identify the places where you can make an adjustment. Um, you'll uh, cr create or craft a plan around uh, adjusting your campaign, and then you will implement those changes on the campaign. So in this example, maybe your um, your strategy adjustment would be to edit the campaign appeal and messaging to highlight a specific success story uh, from, you know, if this is an animal shelter, maybe a specific animal shelter story um, of, of impact. And then you can remeasure 
um, track the donations again over time, monitor your social media engagement, see if your adjusted strategy is resonating with the audience, and then you can go through the uh, evaluation process again uh, and continue making those pivots. So some key takeaways um, before we get to our Q&A. Again, we discussed peer-to-peer how it's super easy for small nonprofits to get up and running, um, inviting their key supporters and to raise twice the funds. Um, and then you'll create a plan, set your SMART goals, uh, use uh, the recruitment and equipping language for your fundraisers. Um, but in order to produce that, you can leverage AI to create all of your content. Um, you'll need to pick a best-in-class fundraising platform to you know, upload all of your information and set it live to your networks. And then be flexible with your strategy, be able to pivot when needed. And then of course, remember that this is not just about the numbers, but it's about building relationships for a truly meaningful impact. Um, you can secure more donors year round on Causebox. We'll uh, paste in some links uh, again to uh, our demo page or and our blog uh, fundraising subscription page. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, uh, yep, oh, here are our additional resources. You'll all be receiving these in the follow-up email. So you can um, check out the resources that we use today and then uh, schedule a demo if you'd like, on-demand demo. And now we are ready for questions. So I'm gonna kick it back to Rob. All right, thank you, Jenna, for running through uh, measuring success as well as uh, the key takeaways today. Uh, again, uh, our webinar is recorded, so feel free to check us out uh, and rewatch it if you want to, and then these slides will be sent out. So at this time, uh, we have uh, just about eight minutes for questions. We'd love to kind of go over the existing questions on the chat, as well as any questions in the Q&A. Feel free to put in your uh, questions into the chat too, if you had the chance to, and we'll be happy to run through it as quick as possible. All right, so let me see. So Anne from Springs in the Desert is asking, can you clarify what you mean by personal pages? So um, I think Jenna, you probably answered this through some of the examples, but when you look at a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, uh, which is very different than a donation page, a donation page is just a form where a donor goes in and makes a donation. While a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, you have different layers. The first layer is the campaign homepage, which you have a progress bar. And then under that, uh, kind of these subpages are these individual personal pages that uh, your supporters can create. So I can go into your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. I can set up my own personal page with my photo and my personal appeal. And then with my personal appeal and story, I can send it out to my own network to drive donations to that page. Uh, those donations would then get processed and then the funds will go directly to the organization. So we have lots of examples uh, that Jenna went over today, uh, but if you're looking for specifics and specific walkthrough, we'll be happy to share some additional examples. Just feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right. Um, we have another question in uh, from uh, Marcia. I, she says that uh, she volunteers for a small church, uh, not doing so well uh, with COVID. Uh, and how how do you go about attracting new members? All right, so so this is difficult. Uh, I think it's a little bit outside the scope of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a great way to to drive donations by leveraging your network. But if you're thinking about driving additional members to to your small church, uh, you can also take a similar approach. Uh, what peer-to-peer -peer is about friends recruiting friends or friends asking friends. So one of the great ways that we've seen uh, churches to really flourish and grow their membership is following a similar method of existing congregants and members, uh, asking their friends and inviting their friends either to uh, the Sunday service or to, uh, to special events um, that the church has kind of organized and created that can attract a larger community. Uh, this way you can get folks on the grounds, uh, get folks plugged into community, you get their contact info, you reach out to them, whether it's one by one, um, kind of a call or an email, or if it's kind of a mass newsletter, uh, this way you can just drive additional folks to be more aware about uh, some of the services that your church offers. All right, uh, great question. Uh, another question is how much, so John is asking, how much should we expect to spend based on how much we hope to earn or receive donations for? All right, that's a great question. So it depends on the type of tools you're using. Uh, on Cosvox, uh, if you're running a peer to peer campaign, we have a 0% option, which allows you, it, it, basically we charge you nothing 
uh, to use our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, um, all the way to a 4.25% platform free option. So it definitely, definitely varies. Most of our customers are either on the 0% rate or on the 3% rate. So if you add that together, uh, as a baseline, you, you, you can either expect to pay with credit card processor fees somewhere around two and a half percent, all the way to five percent max. Uh, when you look at the cost of fundraising, uh, it's actually very low. Uh, when you compare this to events, uh, where the cost of fundraising is sometimes upwards of twenty to thirty percent. When you look at direct mail, uh, typically for the first two years, you run a negative return, so you're actually spending more money than you're making. Uh, when it comes to the direct mail as a cost of fundraising, as well as other fundraising methods, uh, which are around that area or above. Uh, let's say you're running a capital campaign. Uh, your cost of fundraising for a capital campaign is around 20% of the capital campaign budget. So it's kind of crazy uh, when it comes to it. But at the end of the day, uh, cost of fundraising is one aspect to look at, but actually looking at how much you can expand uh, your, your donor acquisition in your donations is another area to look at, right? So if you're looking for more info on Cosbox and our pricing, you can go to cosbox.com slash pricing. Uh, we'll be happy to kind of chat through that. All right. Uh, any other questions? Yes, there's a question in the chat um, from John. So how much should we expect to spend based on how much we hope to earn or receive donations for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's tied to what I just mentioned in terms of the cost of fundraising. So on Cosbox, if you're running a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, uh, you can expect to, to all in with processor fees and everything, you can expect to spend around 2.5% to 5% of funds raised. So let's say you're running a $10,000 campaign, 5% uh, of $10,000 is $500, 500 bucks. So you're, you're, you should expect to spend around $500 on Cosbox when you're raising $10,000. Cool. Very interesting. There was a question earlier, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna um, read it correctly. By Joseph earlier at 109, what about a service business like, like that of a construction working in the social also, is it for purely economic purposes? See, Joseph, I think, I'm not sure if um, you missed some words in there, but can you, can you grab what he's, Putting down, <laughs> Rob. I'm rereading the question. Okay. And while he's reading it, just a friendly reminder: this is going to be emailed within 48 hours. So everybody, the slides in 40. Rob. Um, I, I think if um, if Joseph is able to re-ask this question, then that'd be great. I, I don't want to presume in terms of what he's asking. All right. So uh, I would say just well, one last note on here. I think I think peer peer fundraising, kind of what we talked about today, is a great tool. Um, so uh, you can add that to your fundraising toolkit. So as you're thinking about your fundraising plan for the year, um, you can think about, hey, I want to do a peer peer campaign, or I want to do a Giving Tuesday campaign, or I want to combine the two. So you can give you can do a Giving Tuesday peer peer campaign. I think that's an that's an easy way to get started with something, kind of adding on this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, dynamic onto an existing campaign or event. Or let's say you're doing a gala um, and you can add on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for attendees who are not able to make it in person. So that's one great approach to take a look at it, especially as you're getting started with it, uh, to de-risk how you do peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, but then to augment your existing uh, initiative so you see growth on your, uh, on your fundraising. Uh, we do have tons of resources too. Um, so check us out, cosblocks.com slash blog. A lot of free fundraising resources, whether it's the AI fundraising stuff that we talked about today, or whether it's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising planning, or whether it's just um, additional webinars on peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, we have tons of stuff that you can look at uh, on our website, cosblocks.com slash blog. So thanks so much for the time today, everybody.